I think uh, that's everybody now. Let's. Uh... I think I'm going to unmute. See how bad the background noise is. Ooh, hold on. I got to see if this is on. Nope. I just turned them off. All right, uh, as long as the background noise isn't uh, all that bad, I'm going to leave you guys unmuted in case you have a question. You can just uh, yell out, I guess. Here we go. We're going to start 8-2. Uh, so we're going to bounce back and forth. We did 8-1. We're going to go to 8-2. We're going to go back to 8-1. Uh, tomorrow is a quiz on uh, – it's a Google form. Uh, it's a quiz on uh, what we've covered so far. So – uh, make sure you do this assignment today that you're getting as quickly as possible. Check your answers. If you have any questions, uh, you can shoot me an email or, or whatever we have available to, uh, to our, at our disposal. All right, so share the screen. I need this and I need the calculator. And I have a second monitor, so I, I put your videos, your your video off to the right there. All right, uh, we have section 8.2, day one, find the component form of AB with the given initial and terminal points, and find the magnitude of AB with the given initial and terminal points. And so uh, I, might, uh, I might have to meet you guys, but that's all right, uh, we'll, we'll continue. Negative two, negative seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, down here, that's point A now, and B is four, one, one, two, three, four, one. So this is, uh, the, there is kind of an order to this. We're going to go from A to B. So this is, uh, this should be perfectly straight. Um, there's the vector. Hold on one second. Uh, use chat if you want to get a hold of me. I'm going to mute you guys. Mute all. Share. There we go. All right, so um, find the component form. Well, there's uh, an X component. How far, you know, if we go from A to B, how far do we have to go over and how far do we have to go up? So it's kind of rise over run. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So the X component for this is six. And we use a chevron when we're in component form. And then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the Y component is eight. You know, but if we have big numbers 
if we have decimal values, we're not going to be counting for this. So to get this, and I'll kind of do it in reverse order, uh, is you take four minus negative two. So you take the x2 minus x1, that's, that'll be your x component. You can see that's actually six. And then you take y2 minus y1, or one minus negative seven, and that's where we get uh, eight. Now, so what? So what does this do for us? Well, having this vector here is the exact same as putting this in standard position, going six over, one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight up here. So these two vectors are exactly the same. They are not different vectors. You know, if I draw, if I drew a parabola here, and I drew the same parabola down here. Those are two different parabolas. Those, that's not the same parabola. They have the same characteristics, but they're not the same. These two vectors are considered exactly the same. Vectors do not have location. They only have an X component and a Y component, and that's it. Well, now the magnitude, and the reason we don't use length as a word, and I kind of alluded to this last time, is because this could represent speed, it could represent, uh, represent acceleration, it could represent distance. So rather than saying distance, we have a, a word that covers everything and we, we say magnitude. Well, now this, we just created um, a right triangle. Why'd that pop up? Stop here. More, hold on. Chat one. Could you please let Brian into the Zoom? He accidentally joined the wrong class. Yeah, I can do that. I think I, I th manage participants, Marco and Brian. There we go. Thanks for sending me that message. Got it. <clears throat> well, we created this right triangle. And so to find the magnitude of this vector, really it is the length. And we're actually up here with this one. Just we use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's the square root of uh, 36 plus 64. So we square that, square that, square root, Pythagorean theorem, square to 100. So the length of this one is 10. <clears throat> uh, and I wanted to, uh, I deleted all the ink, but I didn't delete that. Not a big deal, but we'll get rid of it. Find a unit vector with the same direction as the given vector, a unit vector. So in other words, a length of one unit, but going in the exact same direction as six negative two. So what we need to divide, we need to divide each of these by the magnitude. That'll give us a unit vector in the same direction as six negative two. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six negative two is down here. So there's the vector. Now, if we take, if we find, let's find the magnitude. Square root of 36 plus four. Square root of 40, that's uh, four and 10. That's two square root of 10. So there's the magnitude. Now our new vector is um, six over two square root of 10, comma, negative two over two square root of 10. Well, we can reduce this and simplify a little bit, and we get 3 over square root of 10 and negative 1 over square root of 10. So there's the answer right there. So now I think it's nice to have an idea of what did we actually find. Well, if we find the magnitude of the vector that we just found, find a unit vector. By the way, I want to emphasize that's the answer. We have uh, the square root of. 9 tenths, if we square this, I'm doing the Pythagorean theorem now on this to find the magnitude. If we square this one, we get 1 tenth. That's the square root of 10 tenths. That's 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So this vector here, it has a magnitude of 1. And I just want to quickly show you that it has the same direction. So if we take uh, 3 divided by square root of 10, I guess I didn't need the parentheses, 0.9. So this is, and I don't really want you to find the, <clears throat> the decimal value for these. It's not necessary. 
And then we have one divided by square root of 10. That's 0.3. So if we go over 0.9 and down 0.3, that puts us right on this vector. So now it has a length of one, a magnitude of one, and it's going in the same direction. So it didn't end up going like this. It is in the same direction as the given vector. All right, but once again, that's the answer right there. Let DE be the vector with the given initial and terminal points. Write DE as a linear combination of the vectors I and J. Well, I is the vector one zero and j is the vector zero one so let's go over to the problem 5a is d and e and let's get the component form two minus negative six and five minus zero so we subtract the x's and we subtract the y's second one minus the first one so the component form is eight five but it says write de as a linear combination of the vectors i and j and i'm going to show you how to write it and then i'll show you why we write it that way so if you're going to do the homework this is all you need to do it's eight i plus five j so that's what your homework should look like something like that you can probably do a lot of that in your head quite frankly but why is this the same as this well, here's, here's the explanation over here. If we take eight times one zero and five times zero one, the way you do operations on vectors is it's like distributive property. So you multiply eight times one, eight times zero, and then five times zero and five times one, oh no, that's zero. And then five times one is five. And then how you add vectors is you add the x's and you add the y's. So 8 plus 0 is 8, and 0 plus 5 is 5. So this 8i plus 5j is the same as writing 8,5. It's the same thing. But that's the answer we're looking for right there. Find the component form of V with the given magnitude and direction angle. So they're saying the magnitude, now this is not absolute value. In the context of vectors, it means magnitude, not absolute value. At an angle of 45 degrees. Well, if we were on the unit circle at 45 degrees right here, if that was a length of one, it'd be square root of two over two, square root of two over two. But our vector has a length of eight. The good news is all we have to do is multiply the x and the y by eight. So to find the component form, it's magnitude times the cosine of the angle and magnitude times the sine of the angle. That's why when we do the unit circle, we only, we only worry about a circle with a unit of one because everything after that, we just multiply by whatever the radius is. So this is eight squared of two over two, eight squared of two over two. So the answer is four squared of two, four squared of two. So now if this would have been slightly different, if the magnitude would have still been eight, but theta would have been 44 degrees, then we're just gonna use the calculator. We're gonna do eight times cosine of 44. And am I in radians? I think I'm in radians, degrees. It's nice that you guys know what that means now. Uh, so instead of four squared of two, I would just have 5.755 and might as well finish the problem here. Eight sine of 44 is, uh, oh, it should be the same thing. Oh, no, no, sine would be different. No, it should be the same. How come it's different? Oh, it's not 45, 5.557. It's close to being the same, I guess. Find the direction angle of each vector to the nearest tenth of a degree, the direction angle. Well, this is the same as negative 6, 2. Let's get an idea of where that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
one, two. There's the vector right there. <clears throat> and we need to find this angle. But we can use the reference angle inside the triangle to find the angle we actually want. Well, if this side is two, this side is negative six, and we actually, we're gonna start, we're gonna get this angle right there, then the tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we just need to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So theta is inverse tangent, and that reduces to negative one third. We could have kept it as negative two six. So on the calculator, we want the inverse tangent of negative one third. And note that it says negative 18 degrees. And you know, your calculator is always gonna give you the answer in the principal quadrant. So it's saying it's negative 18 and some change, but we don't want that. We want this angle here. So we just have to add 180 to that. So we're gonna add 180 because we're not in the principal quadrant. So the answer we want is 161.565 degrees. Oh, to the nearest tenth, 161.6. On 7b, I picked another one that is not in the principal quadrant. Negative three, negative eight. That's down, that's down here somewhere like that. So we want this angle. So if we draw this triangle, here's the negative three, here's the negative eight. And so you can kind of skip to this part right here. You can say, well, this, I need to find the inverse tangent, uh, and tangent sine over cosine, right? Y over X. So eight thirds, you know, negative eight over negative three. But now your calculator is gonna tell you this is in the first quadrant. So inverse tangent of eight thirds. It's not in the first quadrant but it thinks it's up here. So again, we have to add 180 to this if we're not in uh, the first quadrant. So we're gonna add 180. So the answer we're looking for is 249.4 degrees. So you always gotta be aware of your principal quadrants. And when you do the problem, you, you're gonna wanna know where you are, basically. So you don't have to draw this formal graph and make sure everything's to scale and everything. Just get an idea of where you're at so you can answer the question. Uh, I'm gonna hit, this is all review now. So I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna do this. Uh, oh, I think, think I can manage you guys this way. I'm, I'm gonna unmute all. Are there any questions on what I've done so far? Are there any problems that you'd like to go back to? Hey, so just in case my headphones aren't working, Michael, just say hi for me, please. Hi. Oh, I didn't hear a word. God dang it. Okay. I don't know why they turned off. I think they must have an auto turn off. Michael, say hi one more time. Hi. Okay, thank you. Any questions on uh, anything that we've done so far? Nope, we're good. All right. I guess I can leave you unmuted as long as it's all right. Uh, this is review now. So we're just gonna go quickly through this again, just to make sure we all are on the same page and good to go. Find the component form and magnitude of AB with the given initial terminal point. So for number two, that's gonna be negative six minus two and nine minus negative seven. So negative eight, 16 is the answer for number two. So you take the second x minus, it's x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. For each of the following for f, g, and h, uh, I think this is pretty straightforward. That's why I didn't really cover one, but I'm glad we're doing one here. If we take f, which is eight zero, plus two times um, h, which is negative six two, I think this is very intuitive. Uh, it just follows the order of operations. So this will be negative 12, four. So we multiply this vector by two and then add the corresponding parts. So this should be negative four, four. Yep, right there, negative four, four. 
If you have a minus, just make sure you multiply by a negative three, or you can multiply by three and minus. If you're having problems with that, let me know. It's very straightforward. So if you're having trouble, it should be an easy fix to figure out what's going wrong. Find a unit vector u with the same direction as v. This is where we divide each component by the magnitude. That'll create a vector that has a length of one and in the same direction as nine negative three. So the magnitude for this is square root of 81 plus nine, square root of 90, that's three square root of 10. Just a coincidence that it's square root of 10 again. These won't all be square root of 10. Uh, so we have, I'll put it over here, nine over three square root of 10 and negative three over three square root of 10. I would, I would like you to simplify these. So we have three over square root of 10 and negative one over square root of 10. So this vector has a magnitude of one in the same direction as nine negative three. Let DE be the vector with the given initial and terminal points. Write D as a linear combination of the vectors I and J. So we get the component form negative seven minus nine and two minus negative six. So that's negative 16, eight. And so it's negative 16 I plus eight J. Find the component form of V with the given magnitude. Magnitude, this got cut off, and direction angle. So this is four cosine of 135 and four sine of 135. Now the expectations, now that we've done the unit circle, is that if you can give me exact answers, that's what I expect. If you can't, then we're gonna give decimal answers. So 135, that's over here. And this is negative square root of two over two, square root of two over two. So we have four square root of two over two negative, I guess, because that's the X is negative and uh, four squared of two over two. So we get uh, negative two squared of two, two squared of two. Those are considered exact answers because we didn't use decimals. Find the direction angle of each vector to the nearest 10th of a degree. So we have the point negative two, five. Negative two, one, two, three, four, five. This gives you an idea of where we are. We're actually in the second quadrant. So we want inverse tangent of negative five halves, y over x. Remember tangent sine over cosine. So on the calculator, we have inverse tangent of negative five halves. Now the calculator is gonna tell you that you're actually in the fourth quadrant, not true. Calculator saying we're down here. So we need to add 180 to this angle. So plus 180, and that's where we get the 111.8. All right, I hope I didn't go too fast. Is there anything that you would like me to go back to? This section is pretty straightforward. You just gotta practice a little bit and it really shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, oh, some are still muted, I think. Unmute all. Uh, keep looking at, uh, keep refreshing my homepage in case I've made some changes. Uh, I don't think I've made a whole lot to honors free calc, but I, I may have. Uh, keep checking Google Classroom. Keep checking your email. And uh, I think I have spots for this week's assignments on Google Classroom. If I don't, just shoot me an email. Hey, you didn't put one up. Uh, I'm trying to make this as routine as I can, but uh, some of the things that I don't usually do, I, I don't usually use Google Classroom, uh, haven't become real routine for me yet. So there might be a time where I forget a period to put the assignment up there. But uh, uh, try to continue to turn them in as PDFs. Please don't email me your assignments. You wouldn't believe how many I get a ridiculous amount of emails. And if you email to me, it's gonna get lost in there. I just know it. Uh, and then I, I'll give you a zero and you'll have to say, hey, I emailed it to you. 
So you can avoid all that just by turning it into Google Classroom, please. I think that's the best way to, to keep this organized uh, for me or help me out a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think I have anything else for you other than make sure you get on uh, the website tomorrow sometime and take that quiz. So you do have an assignment tomorrow, even though we're not meeting. Make sure you get that done. It's a short quiz. It shouldn't take you very long. And uh, then on Monday, or actually uh, Tuesday for you guys, we'll be moving on and we'll go back to eight one with some applications. Any questions? Oh, we got a chat. Hold on. What was the app called that turned pictures into PDFs? Uh, I use Cam Scanner. If, uh, but if you have an iPhone, there should be an app on there that's called Notes. And that turns documents into PDFs as well. And uh, just, you can YouTube a video if, if you need to learn how to use that. But I use Cam Scanner. I don't have an, I don't have an iPhone. Anything else for the good of the cause? All right, you guys, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And uh, I will see you live again on Tuesday. Bye-bye.